metaphors for setting therapeutic directions. With Anita Gervin. Anita, in an earlier video, we were talking about the metaphors we use in counseling. And in particular, we um, had some conversation around the client metaphor and um, some of what comes along with that word client and some of what doesn't come along with that word client. And one of the places where um, I've been really thinking in this particular chapter is around the idea of change and preparation for change and setting um, some kind of um, forward motion, which itself is a metaphor, I realize. And so um, I've had feedback in the past around um, goal setting and that goal setting not being a very um, effective metaphor for some people because of the embeddedness of goal setting within the Western linear worldview. So I thought we might just um, talk about some of these metaphors around change and um, how they impact potentially clients and how we might open that up a little bit. Right, yeah, the goal setting one is, is very interesting. I guess you're thinking about in a, in a kind of a linear life pattern, how you have goals for certain times. And I was thinking about even um, my children having kind of five-year plans um, foisted upon them in school and having to think about these sort of sets of times, which kind of map onto financial, you know, those sort of financial planning type goals when you hear from your financial institution, what's your short term, your long term, medium term goals. So we do need to kind of think about what that client relationship in an economic model is bringing in and where that works or doesn't. So yeah, just in thinking about um, the model of five-year plans that we get that are inculcated into us during school is a kind of a colonial framework, a colonial kind of capitalist framework mm -hmm. that we we think about. Um, and what happens when something shifts as most cultures that are not um, really into human mastery, um, <laughs> a little bit more humble around being embedded in larger ecologies, will not be stringently adhering to a kind of a five-year plan of mastery, right? So that notion of where we set our goals and we're masters of our own narrative and, and linear path and trajectory um, leave out a lot. So of course, COVID-19 as a kind of an ecological agent brings in a disruption to a, a kind of a, a five-year plan and all the youth now have been told to pivot and be resilient in different ways. So thinking about these time, these moments of big change are ones that I particularly attend to in terms of what metaphors we're using. So pivot gives us something. It offers a profoundly big moment of change um, for not just individuals, but potentially societies. So we might think in this moment of pivoting, um, how else might, um, these relationships be explained, explored through through metaphors. So I'm thinking of, um, you know, uh, for example, I read a lot of Toni Morrison. Um, she she talks about living with ghosts and uh, trajectories of time are not really as linear. So living with ghosts in African American and um, some African traditions are um, really mapping onto the presence of of not haunted, not being haunted in a in a scary horror way, but uh, living with ancestors, mm -hmm. thinking about futures. Um, you know, some of the strength and harm comes from pasts that are that are maybe traumatic, but also strong. Um, so thinking about goal setting without thinking about wider communities, be they present now or be they from past family and future thinking uh, and ecological agents of course thinking about COVID um, you know it's a it's a kind of a, a strange imposition to think about goal setting at these times when other actors come in so yeah again thinking about client relationships capitalism asks us to think about a client as a single um, individual who's going to um, profit from the, who's operating from a profit motive, right? So if we're thinking about ourselves as 
as beneficiaries of a particular model, we're going to act in a particular way, which is built in with self-care. You know, self-care even tracks in a lot of capitalist models of of the well wellness industry. <laughs> um, you know, yoga without the cultural background, um, spas, which are you know consuming a lot of um, a lot of cap by byproducts of capitalism and creating sort of consumer behaviors. So yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff that gets tr kind of trafficked in, another metaphor trafficked in with the notion of clients. So it might be interesting to think, well, the client model took us from this model, the medical pathologizing model into this model of services, and it offers us the capacity to think in this way, but what are the limits of that client model? And what else can we use um, in collaboration with our relations that we're building to think about other um, models and, and to invite our, those clients maybe to help shape the metaphors themselves. Mm -hmm. If goal setting doesn't work for one, then what would that look like to think about um, alternative paths? If path is still a, a kind of a, a linear model, right? Um, so what, what other metaphors would those clients like to use for relations that are present for, for good relations, right? We hear that a lot. Maybe that's, that's a, a bringing in a different set of metaphors. If we think of good relations and not just me as a singular client who's actualizing myself in my limited time on earth, but good relations, what kinds of metaphors do those sorts of relations bring in might be an interesting question. Mm -hmm. And as you're talking, I'm thinking about the other metaphor that you use around way making. Mm -hmm. and, the, and for me, that has such a different tone to goal setting because it's, it's so much more open to um, definition by the person who is, um, creating their own way, creating their own, whether it's path or journey or whatever other metaphor or simply way. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah. open, it opens up a different way of talking about um, time and space and mm -hmm. who has an influence on um, where, where this way making takes a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're right. I like you've said way making, which is nice. I, I use way finding, but way oh, making, right. way finding are kind of interesting, I think, because um, making is, is interesting to me that you've used that because it does seem to me more collaborative. Way mm -hmm. making could include a community, whereas way finding seems like you're kind of like, you know, in the dark looking for something. So yeah, I often, I did use in a chapter, the notion of wayfinding with metaphors. Um, so yeah, I think of wayfinding with, or what you say, way making as a collaborative endeavor is a kind of a nice way to think of what we're doing in this life, right? We're wayfinding, which engages a kind of a humility, right? There's, there's less hubris when one's making one's way or, or finding way finding you you sort of anticipate that they're going to be whether you call them obstacles or multiplicities agents uh, relations you will encounter and so there's never such a thing as a linear trajectory of I'm going to get there from here because yeah you one has to engage with different ways it might be interesting to think of people who do gaming or you know something else that's a kind of another metaphor I'm thinking in terms of way finding that a game presents you with certain, um, you know, you have the unforeseen, you have unforeseen agents coming in to, to shape your, your way through something. So, so a gamer might find um, a gaming metaphor um, useful in that sense, or yeah, what, what people, um, you know, where, wherever their positionalities are, they might have, different kinds of metaphors that help them to do that but yeah i find in general the notion of way way finding or what you've really um, evocatively said is way making is a very nice one to think about living right um, in collaboration suspending mastery control and individuals 
And it's interesting that I am mistakenly um, picked up way making as opposed to way finding because because it makes an interesting conversation around the difference between those mm -hmm. two, right? Because exactly. the because there's a piece that there's a piece to finding that is the discovery piece that I think brings in community, brings in ancestry, brings in um, ways of knowing beyond oneself um, mm -hmm. in that sort of finding metaphor. And mm -hmm. then there's the, in the way making, there's a, a collaboration and relationship mm -hmm. um, that also kind of results in something new potentially. Absolutely, yeah. I like that making, I, I like the shift that you, just as a talking point that I think people could could use as a as a generative thing well what if I'm making something because you are making something as much as you're finding right so mm -hmm. I like that sort of the the rub between making and finding because you're right finding looks like it's it's already there for you to discover which could even be a a kind of a colonial imposition of discovery um, but if you're making then you are associating multiple agents not just your own hopefully I mean people could do mm. things individually but yeah I think there's some nice play there and that's that's the whole notion of what we're doing here is that if there were more conversation about the words what would be teased out in those conversations what what does that generation of the space between finding and making enable for people to express themselves in their own, whether it's a journey <laughs> or a, you know, um, universe or cosmos or relation, set of relations. Mm -hmm. And as we talk uh, in this chapter about um, the relationship between client and counselor and, um, and setting some kind of direction or, um, um, perspective or you know some there there is in counseling this sort of intentionality that we are moving in some way together and so um, to find ways I think for people to talk about that that are not bound by Eurocentric perspectives um, mm -hmm. is really important. Mm -hmm.